Hey, deserving listeners, it's time for me to watch The Bachelor. I've never seen this show before, and a lot of you have been asking that I watch this show and react to it. As a couples therapist, I am eternally interested in seeing what you all have been enjoying about this show. I thought I would watch this entire season. Tonight, a episode just aired, and so I thought every Tuesday I would post a video reacting to Monday night's episode. So let's get to watching this show that everyone seems to be watching for the past 20 years and I have been ignoring. Tonight, 20 single men and women are on their way here right now, and they all have two things in common. One, each of them is hoping to fall deeply in love. And two, all of them are hoping to share that deep passion for music with that special someone. Well, that's interesting. So this is a variation on The Bachelor. But here we have, it sounds like 10 and 10 heterosexual people, I'm guessing. Who knows? Hopefully they'll have some queer people, but we'll see. And then you also, there are musicians. So they're also, I guess, trying to meet a compatible musician slash soulmate. As a musician myself, I can say that that's incredibly hard to find. Finding your true love is hard to do, and finding a true soulmate musician is really hard to do. When I first started out as a therapist, I actually wanted to be a therapist for bands because I've been in a lot of bands, a lot of musical groups. And one of the things that I often would say was being in a band with people is like being married, but you can't have sex to make up for your fights. Being in a band is an incredibly intimate experience. You depend on each other. You spend a lot of time with each other. You have these, shall I say, almost orgasmic experiences when you're playing music together. I know that might gross some of you out, but that is a good word for it in my experience. I've had some of the most wonderful experiences of my life playing with other musicians. I guess we'll see what happens um, on the show. Can these people experience that with each other? Let's find out if they have orgasmic experiences. Why am I using that word? I don't know. I've never dated another musician. Other people say, oh, it doesn't work. But I think if you can find somebody else that you click with romantically and you click with musically, I don't think there's anything better than that. Yeah, I could see how people would say that. It makes sense. You want to share everything that you can with your partner and you want to spend all your time with your soulmate, right? Is the ideal that we often prop up in our culture. As I've talked about in other videos, in the United States, in mainstream culture, we tend to want to put all of our eggs in one basket, meaning that uh, we hope to get all of our attachment needs, all of our friend needs, all of our interest needs, all of our hobby needs met with one person, our soulmate, our spouse. But it's unrealistic to think that that would happen. It's very rare that that sort of thing happens. But, you know, people can have ideals and they can shoot for something. And, you know, it's, there's nothing wrong with saying, I hope I fall in love with someone and I hope they're a musician and I hope that we gel musically together. That, that, that makes sense. But I'm trying to think off the top of my head if there are any famous musician couples because it's one thing for two musicians to be together like jay-z and beyonce i guess and i guess they did make music together so i guess that that is one example there's probably other examples but i think that it's, it's rare and i think the reason is is because when we have lots of boxes to check with our soulmates we're like okay well then i need to be attracted to them we need to have similar sense of humor we need to have a similar life goals we need to live in the same sort of region we want to have kids or not have kids, whatever. You know, you have all these boxes. Well, uh, those are probably more, in, you know, we could think of a lot of boxes that are more important than you both are musicians who actually like each other's music. You know, that, that would be a box for a lot of people that would take, you know, second place to a lot of more primary things, you know. Do we actually enjoy spending time together? These kinds of things. So, I don't know. We'll see if it works out with them. So I know this is completely unrelated, but it always bothers me when in Los Angeles, they always wet the streets because they're trying to make it look more fancy or something. And all I can think about is just all the wasted water. And as someone from Seattle that fully understands what wet streets are supposed to look like after a rain, you know, if you have wet streets, then you should have wet cars. And that car is bone dry. And further up that 
that driveway, it's bone dry. That's because it didn't actually rain. That's because a truck came by and just dumped a bunch of water because the producer thought it looked cool to have a reflective wet surface. Uh, people who listen to my podcast know I'm always <laughs> ranting about that detail. My wife gets annoyed when I, whenever I point out wet streets, you know. So that's what came out of my mouth for this show so far. You know, I don't want to deal with any drama stars or douchebags. I made it. Hi. Yes, we're all hi. Anna. Michael, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Michael. Have How are we doing? Piercing eyes. Is that like blue green? You got it right. Yeah. Yes. Like well, definitely Savannah's beautiful, but we'll have to see how her voice sounds. So <laughs> they edited that pretty well. She's like, oh, I hope there's no douchebags. And then this guy walks in and instantly starts acting, I guess, kind of like a douchebag. We'll see how this guy turns out. Whenever I see stuff like this, I always suspect that the producers are pulling some strings. Maybe this Michael Todd guy has some douchebag leanings and the producers detected that and they're like, hey, you know, go for it because... We need to have a mixture of personalities and we need conflict to happen. And so this guy instantly walks up, looks a woman up and down and then says, yeah, she's beautiful, but we'll see how her voice is. We'll see how this turns out. I'll hit you with uh, my original song. It's called Hot Tuts. Hey, pretty baby, got you looking at me. Oh, awkward. I mean, there's a time and a place for sharing your uh, original songs, and this doesn't seem like the place. As a songwriter myself, yeah, I get the impulse to want to share, but uh, there's a time and a place probably. We'll see how they react. Imagination's running wild, you're driving me crazy. Yeah, all right. I appreciate Cheers it. I don't know what a hot touch is, Ooh. and I, I don't think I want one. <laughs> Again... All I can think of is the producers are behind the scenes saying, okay, you know, go up, mix it up. Because the other guys so far, they're all being really polite. They're all being really nice. And so you always got to have someone like this on a show. Yeah. I like your lips. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> a lot. I don't want to ruin it. I don't want to be a party pooper. But when I see stuff like this, all I can think of is like, Either this guy is like a piece of work or the producers were like, OK, we, I want you to go in and, you know, really kind of accentuate that you're a douchebag. I mean, that's the only word I can really come up for it. I mean, I like your lips. I really like them. Like, uh... Gentlemen, there's 12 of you here. Ladies, eight of you. So, fellas, if you're not starting a relationship, in a relationship, you don't have a partner by the time you get to that first rose ceremony, you got to pack your stuff because you'll be headed home. So, wait, these guys, these 12 guys and eight women, and so four guys are going to go home tonight or the next day? That's a lot of pressure. I'm feeling Matt. Oh, my Matt, gosh. Yeah. Matt is great. He's so nice. Uh, he's, he's pretty cool. Yeah. Hey, an Asian sister on the show. What a wonderful thing. I always like to see... Fellow Asians representing, good to see. I uh, actually run my own nonprofit. What? Yeah. I was diagnosed with cystic fibrosis before I was born. I grew up in and out of the hospital. So we fund music therapy programs for children's hospitals. Ah, music therapy. Good to see. We've done episodes on music therapy before. You can listen to those if you search for them. Strong supporter of music therapy. See, now these two have it right. They are trying to bond over music. I mean, that's the whole point of the show, right? So they're trying to play music together. The other element that is worth commenting on is the race, ethnicity side here. Uh, I wonder for these two being you know, in the minority, because I can't always assume people's ethnicity, but it looks like a lot of ca people who would identify as Caucasian or white. And then you have, it looks to be one person who probably identifies Asian and you have a smattering of African-American people. You just got to wonder, do these two people match up because they're like, well, people probably expect us to get together or are they genuinely attracted to each other over other people? Or are they like, well, we're probably more comfortable together. I, I, wanted, I would want to ask these people about their experience of, of race. Oh. Oh. What is that? It's a date card. 
four of the guys are going home this week. So it's important. Oh, this week. Oh, okay. Well, that's kind of nice to get a full week to decide. That's better than one night. You know, I do mostly pop country, so it's a little different. They need a different key. She's not in her range. They need to raise the key somehow. Um. I feel like it's like a little low for me, you know, in the first sense. This one more comfortable? Yes. Gravity. Better. Better. I'm like honestly pissed because like, I actually genuinely like Matt. Like. And I'm so stupid. I'm like, I like you, I like you, I like you. And then he's like, I like you too. You, just kidding. Like, no. So, okay. This is always, this always breaks my heart because she's hurt. Her feelings are hurt. And I always just have to say, it's okay to have your feelings hurt. This is such a weird situation. The guy likes two of the women, if not more. And he's, you know, he had to choose one or, and you still it, the thing is is it still might work might work out between you and him. Uh, you don't have to look at this as just like oh, uh, this black and white situation. You know that that's always what I'm thinking when I watch these shows. And now she's she's really sad. It looks like she's even cried a little bit. It makes it makes sense. She's hurt. She th felt a connection with Matt. She thought things were going to happen, and and Matt chose someone else. I mean that's just got to be rough, man. You know because in other dating situations, right? you don't necessarily see it, or at least it's not right in front of your face, or at least it doesn't happen right in front of you, right? Like you're dating a guy and he's, you think, well, he might be dating other women, who knows, but it, you're not, you don't have to watch it happen right in front of you. That's just gotta be really hard. And even if she did have some potential residual feelings after this, I could imagine that walking him literally walk off into the sunset with another woman might squash any potential warmth or romance that she had for him. It's working against me. And gravity wants to bring me down. I think it's a good voice. I like it. I like his voice. It's sort of classic, it's uncomplicated, it's a little breathy, but maybe that's the type of song it is. But uh, I like his voice. I like that sort of classic, clear singing voice. Oh, gravity is working against me. I still think it's a little low for her range, but I guess she's probably hope wishing that the whole song was up at least another step or something. Oh my God. This is literally so beautiful. Look at the smog in LA. <laughs> that's that's just one of those things. I mean, Seattle gets its fair share of smog too, but my God, look at that. Like you can't see anything. Uh, I'm, and it really does make the sunsets look great. Tongue cam. <laughs> uh, you, you get to see a lot of tongue in, in this, that close-up right there. That is the deal. Okay. That's a pinky promise. Yeah. You're going to sing me a song? I'm going to sing you a song. Okay. <laughs> okay, so I'm genuinely pulling for this couple. They seem like nice people. Quit fooling around. This is wild. Mel and I walk into a backyard to a private concert, and it's the plain white tees. I'm absolutely mind blown. So this is interesting. I mean, this is just, I don't know if this is a humble brag or something, but so back in the day, for those of you who listen to the podcast, me and Umberto, my co-host on this podcast, we were in a band together. We actually had worked with like a producer that had produced the White Tees or had discovered the White Tees. I don't know. I can't remember what his deal was, but he was a music industry guy in LA and we actually worked with him and he tried to help us write more poppy songs. He was really trying to, Umberto writes music, I write music. And I got the feeling that 
the guy that worked with the Plain White Tees really got along with Umberto because Umberto is much more of a pop writer and singer, and I'm much more emo, depressing music, sad music. And so the guy was trying to get me to write more pop music, and we just never saw eye to eye. Whenever I hear the Plain White Tees, I always think about that guy that we worked with who really liked Umberto more than he liked me. It's a pinch me moment. So I like that the Plain White Tees guy actually has his capo up really high. I write a lot of songs like that. There's a different kind of sound, obviously, that you get with your capo really high like that. But it also opens up new possibilities for fra- for phrasing of the guitar, if that makes any sense. So I don't know. That's just another thing that came out of my face when I was watching this. Because <laughs> uh, I always feel like I'm sort of a hack because I feel like some people don't like it. They feel like it's sort of hacky to use a capo. Like a real guitarist would be able to play those chords without the need of a capo. Because the capo definitely makes it a lot easier to play a certain style. So I always feel like I'm kind of a hack. So I like to see other musicians when they're being as hacky as me. Today has been a very rough day for me. What Matt did has been like weighing on my heart all day long. I've been trying to convince myself. So she's feeling the feelings. That's great. You know, she's she's sad. Uh, it makes sense. She felt a real connection, and Matt hurt her feelings. I I hope she can see her way through this to realize that there's still a chance with her and Matt. Is is the point that you don't have to give up on that. And I also say that a really good way to grieve and a really good way to express emotions is through music. If you're a musician out there, you know what this is like. It's one of the best things about being a musician is is the ability to just get things out. I started writing music when I was 16 or 17 when you have a lot of confusing emotions. I mean, just think about all the emotional therapy that I got out of playing different kinds of music. Obviously, just listening to music is very therapeutic as well. So honestly, when I've been in very terrible emotional places, I've written and performed some of the best music I've ever done. I don't want to give the impression like I'm an amazing musician in any way, shape, or form. All these people are better musicians than I am. So I'm not putting myself in their class. I'm just saying um, that's, uh, that's my reactivity to it. Having said that, you don't have to be an amazing musician to experience the beauty and the uh, therapy of it. We didn't lose love on the way That we just never really had it there But it breaks my heart to say I get chills when I hear good singers. That That's really, especially when you know it's coming from a real place like that. It's amazing. Cause at least I loved you for a while. I think she's writing this song. I think they're writing this song on the fly. That that's that's the impression I, I'm getting. That's pretty amazing. Unless this is a popular song I've never heard before. It's just not fun to have to deal with rejection. And I love like what did I do wrong? I don't know. I do want Julius Rose. That's, to me, that's ideal scenario. I'm pulling for that guy. I'm pulling for, I think he's Austin, long hair, big hat. I'm pulling for that guy. Seems like a nice guy. This was unexpected. This was a surprise. Would have thought I saw you coming. I will say there's a new style of song ri- singer songwriter where it's always I, I don't know what how to say it's sort of like old it's like kind of like classic R and B I suppose is the way I'd phrase it. Although I like that style of music, I just wish there were other impulses that these younger singer songwriters had. All these songs kind of sound the same to me. They're beautiful songs, but there's so many other genres of of writing music. That's what you said, Rudy. I think you're misinterpreting what happened. How do you not? Re- that was like this is the tiniest conversation, think, and you somehow like, because, just completely uh, left well, your brain. Well, Rudy, listen honestly. It's if I same. worded it yeah, poorly, worded I, it, I'm sorry. Like in the worst way. And so no, then, okay, okay, hold on, hold on, no, 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 no. Do you understand how that makes me feel? Because you like got my hopes up and said like, "Oh, I'm taking on the day." She's she's setting it up, and all you got to do is apologize. All you got to be like, "You're right. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have done that." 
that would likely get her to calm down. That might even set the pace to maybe getting back into her good graces ultimately. So let's see if Matt can just apologize. Just say you're sorry. People out there, just say you're sorry. It doesn't take much. That's what you said. I'm taking you on the date. What do you want to do? I'll come grab you in a second. <laughs> this, this feels like a lot. I don't honestly care that much if it feels like a lot to you okay. right now. All right. Yeah. And like, I'm freaking crying because I'm like, don't just cry. so don't emotional. Don't but like, cry. out of all the guys, I literally like was drawn to you. And then you do, like, you pull that <laughs> on me. I didn't, like, I didn't, I didn't. I, I hope you understand. This is me misunderstanding what I was supposed to do. Again, just apologize, my friend. Just, she. <laughs> She's setting it up. All you got to do is be like, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. I'm mortified. Now, I don't know if he is mortified. I don't know if he is sorry. But if he could find that in his heart to feel bad, even if he's like, I think she misinterpreted me, which is kind of what his point is, it's not unreasonable to think that she thought she was going to be chosen because they had a connection. I think they even made out. <laughs> just say you're sorry, dude. Just, just say you're sorry. You're sorry. And you, you know, you didn't. You hope you didn't mean that to happen. Okay. With you girls, yeah. I, I didn't. I so didn't. you did that with everyone. Uh, yeah, that's yeah, what I thought. Yeah. Okay. I just sometimes stuff comes out of my mouth. I don't even know what's going on. Mm -hmm. Okay. You're you're really mad at me. Yeah, you made me look like a freaking dumbass in front of everyone. I didn't mean for that to happen. I really didn't. Okay, I didn't mean for that to happen. That was like. 2% into the direction of an apology, but you know. The thing is, I, I kind of like that guy. He seemed like a genuine guy, and uh, I don't know. I don't know why he couldn't just apologize. Just apologize. Come on, people. I, I hope that Rudy doesn't go and badmouth me to every, every other girl in the house. Well, of course she's going to, because you just said a bunch of words, like... Just apologize. Just apologize. You seem like a nice guy. Just apologize. Hey, pretty baby, got you looking at me. Got you looking at me. Okay, so it's uh, now I'm calling him the douchebag, but I'm sure he's a nice guy. But I'm pretty sure the producers have told him to be the douchebag, so I feel okay in calling him the douchebag. So the douchebag. <laughs> And by the way, I apologize for my hair. I, I haven't been able to get my hair cut during this coronavirus situation. This song is even kind of douchebaggery. -y. He is, I caught you looking at me. I caught you looking at me. There's nothing wrong with a song like that, but it just, it all fits. Oh, and I just, I don't like that style of singing. I don't know if I just don't like him, but that sort of um, affectation. Come on, you got Like, uh, I don't, maybe he's playing it up for laughs, but if that's the way he always sings, there's just something about that that just, uh, that just, ugh. like Maroon 5, that guy does that sometimes. Now, as I always say, as a citizen, as a non-therapist, I'm free to have whatever kind of reactions I want to. But as a therapist, I always have to wonder, what is it about this guy that is triggering something in me? Through projection and projective identification, we will project aspects of ourselves that we don't like into other people, and then we'll have a reaction against that. So as a therapist, I always have to wonder. If he was a client, obviously, I really have to wonder. But it's also just a bit of a self-discovery. Therapists should always strive for self-discovery and self-awareness. And so in this moment, I will model that. And I'll take this opportunity to learn a little bit about myself. So the issue goes, or the defense mechanism goes uh, that, and this is a very old one, going back to Freud and Klein and all these people 100 plus years ago. The idea goes is that we internalize aspects of our parents or we adopt certain adaptations on our personality, and some of them become aspects of ourselves that, are, that we have a complex about. We're actually not quite happy about ourselves. So one of the ways of coping with that is to compartmentalize it or to deny it, but it ends up causing problems because it's still there. And so one of the ways that we can relieve ourselves from that internal pressure is to project it out onto someone else and then react against it. And so it's externalized. So we have an internal conflict that's externalized. And so when I, and I can sort of work my way backwards. So there's something about this guy that's sort of rubbing me wrong. And what is it about him? Well, he's, he's really trying hard to impress, or at least that's my, that's my projection. 
he is very overly confident in himself and he seems to think he's very sexy or something. So I guess it's a, it's a narcissism or a boisterousness that I am uh, labeling him as. Now I'm guessing not, every, not everyone sees him that way. So then I have to think, okay, I'm having a particular intense reaction against him. Maybe it's because I'm projecting an aspect of myself onto him and making an internal conflict external. And so I have to wonder, am I actually kind of boisterous and narcissistic and histrionic? And do I have a bit of a douchebag inside of me that I don't like about myself? and I'm in denial of, and my way of coping with that is to find people that are good candidates for my projection, i.e. people who I label as douchebags, and then I label them that, and then I fight against that. I would say yes. Um, I, I would say yes, I do have an inner douchebag, if you will, <laughs> that I don't like about myself. So I don't know, Let's. I'm gonna continue to watch this guy and see what else comes up for me as I experience his personality. To me. Oh, that voice. I do not like that style of singing. It, that, what is it? What, why do people do that? Just sing your natural singing. He probably has a wonderful singing voice. Like, just sing your song. Just sing th with your voice. Don't try so hard. I don't like it. I like, I just, I, I like, I've already told you, I just, I feel very comfortable around you. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Just say what you feel. You can say, honestly, you can say to me whatever's on your mind. I'm, I'm like an open book. I don't, I'm not judgmental. Instead of putting a lot of pressure on her, he's, he's just chill. He's just like, hey, you know, I don't want to put pressure on you, but I just want to talk and, you know, whatever you want to say, I'm here to say. It also is a really great way to date, it, just listening to each other in an uncomplicated, unanxious way. Everyone wants to be heard and listened to and understood. Uh, take it from me as a therapist. People thrive in that space. We often are walking around in a frequent, if not constant sense that no one really cares to know us. No one really understands us. And when we finally get that with someone and we're attracted to them, boy, it's a powerful feeling. This love that we've been working on can't seem to hold you like I want to so I can feel you in my arms see it's that it's that same style it's like that it's a very similar guitar style very similar song style again it's a perfectly fine style but I don't understand why they all write in that exact same style there's so many other styles to write a song in <laughs> maybe I'm just an old person and you know that we're doing my deal Slow dancing in a burning room. His voice seems fine, but it's not amazing. The other guy had something kind of special about his voice that I liked. <laughs> tongue cam. Lots of tongue on this show. <laughs> Lots of tongue. Will you please accept this rose? I absolutely will. So again, I hate to be a party pooper, but I always wonder if she wasn't sure who she was going to choose and she talked with the producers and they're like, well, we really want Matt to stay in the mix because we think he plays well on camera or we want him and Rudy, I think her name was, to have more conflict later on. We'll see, I guess, as the season progresses, right? I very much put myself out there tonight. Okay, we're pulling for the long hair guy. Come on, Austin. He's from Austin, right? Come on, Julia. Pick, pick the nice guy. Pick the underdog. Yay. Sheridan, will you accept this rose? That's great. I don't know if it's genuine for her or the producers told her to do that, but I'm glad he's still on the show. Why do we like underdogs so much? We all feel like we're an underdog on the inside, right? We all identify with the person who doesn't have it all, you know, has the flaws and that kind of thing. And the thing is, is he doesn't, he doesn't seem to have any flaws. He just seems like a genuinely, I, I don't know. I'm always pulling for the nice guys um, and the nice people. I, I always hope that they get what they want. I like nice people. He seems like a nice guy. <gasps> she listened to her. Oh, so I will say that 
I'm a therapist reacting to these videos. I'm a couples therapist reacting to these videos. When I have these kinds of thoughts, I'm not reacting as a therapist. I'm reacting as a citizen. So maybe I should like delineate between my citizen thoughts and my therapist thoughts. Because as a therapist, I have trained myself. And I think it's, it's a more rational place to be where as an outsider, I don't root for any relationship. I just observe and see if relationships work out or not. And if you know, Julia wants to be with him in the end, then great. And if she doesn't, then that's also great. It's, it's up to people to make their own choices about who they want to spend the rest of their life with. And I, as a therapist, should not be pulling for any particular result. You'll see a lot of therapists will do this, actually. They will see a couple and they'll be like, oh, I don't think this couple should stay together. And they'll subtly influence that or even just say it. They might even be like, yeah, I don't think you two are going to work out. That is a horrible thing for a therapist to say. How would they know the answer to that question? I, as a couples therapist, learned many years ago, if not decades ago, that I have no idea what couples should stay together and what couples should not stay together. Even couples that have a lot of conflict. Early in my career, I would make that choice. I'd be like, yeah, I don't think this couple should, should be together. And then later I would learn that they actually were very good together. It just took, a lot, took them maybe some time, months, years to work out their differences. And underlying that conflict was a deep connection that was worth salvaging. So over time, I learned that I just, as an outsider, can almost never tell whether or not a couple should be together or should not be together. So as a therapist, I just say, well, everyone on this show, do what you feel, you know, do make the choice that makes sense to you. And I, I, I'm not pulling for any one particular result. But as a citizen, you know, you got to have some reaction. So Trevor. Oh, Trevor. so again, as a citizen, I was kind of pulling for the other guy. I mean, this guy seems like a nice guy too, but it's a bummer that the other guy has to go home. Yeah, he had a real special voice. They should have, he should, be, he should come on season two if they do this again. Everybody's shocked. <laughs> I think that we're all happy to have Ryan here. See, uh, again, I bet you that's the producers. The producers are like, we like that guy on the show. We like the tr love triangle between uh, that guy and the other guy and the other gal. <laughs> and so, again, I hate to be a party pooper, but. Uh, um, that it just looks that way. I'm sort of happy that Mr. Douchebag is gone, but I'm kind of sad because I was hoping to have more reactions to him so I could figure out what sort of vulnerability I have inside of myself. But I guess, you know, we can't have it all. Coming up next week. Okay, so I can see why people watch these shows. You know, The, the Bachelor presents Listen to Your Heart. I, I can see why people get addicted to these kinds of shows because you just want to find out what happens. It's like a real life soap opera, you know? So that does it for my first reaction video. Expect every Monday or Tuesday for this, this reaction video to come out. And I am excited to go down this journey with these people and with you all. And so comment below. Tell me what you think. Who are you rooting for? Did you experience the D-bag as a D-bag or is that just me? Uh, who are you pulling for? Let me know. And as always, become a patron of the podcast. If you haven't already, that's how I know that you like this show. And also subscribe if you're on YouTube and hit the bell. If you hit the bell, you get an email notifying you when the next episode is released. And you can even, I think, watch it from your email. And as always, please take care of yourself out there because you really deserve it. And take care of other people because they deserve it too. Everyone deserves to be taken care of.